everyone! As you may have heard already, the Export to Google Street View option is now available in VT Pro. This means you can now directly upload your panoramas and virtual tours onto Google Street View, so anyone on Google can move around the streets here or, what's even more interesting, go inside. Here we can move around, walk through the place, have a look and explore just like in our usual virtual tours, just that now we are on Google. This gives us the possibility to become Google trusted photographers and market ourselves as such, which in turn is great for when you want to offer this as a service to businesses. All right. So let's have a look at how to do that in our program in 3D Vista Virtual Tour Pro or VT Pro. It's really quite straightforward, you'll see. You can upload a virtual tour that you already created before or you can start a new project from scratch and upload it, which is what we will demonstrate first. But I do want to stress that if you already have a virtual tour project with its links, hotspots and skin, you can take that same exact project and publish it for Google. You won't have to create a new project for that. We'll show that at the end of this video too, but let's start from scratch for now. Just like we start any kind of project, whether for Google or not, we first import our panoramas. Here you could now edit and work on your virtual tour as usual. So you could link your panoramas, add hotspots, create a skin or add a photo album. However, all of these things are not supported by Google Street View, so they won't show. On Street View, we would only see the panoramas and how they're connected. So for this demonstration, we skip all hotspots and bells and whistles and directly click on publish. Here we select export to Google Street View and the first time you do this you will be asked to log in with your Google account. So let's do that. If that should pop up, click permit. And here we insert our email address which again needs to be a Google account. Click permit. And now you can see that our account is connected to VT Pro. From here you can log out or go to your profile, which shows all elements that you uploaded onto Google Street View with your account. But back inside VT Pro, click Edit Tour. And this first window shows all panoramas available in your project and asks you to select the ones you actually want to upload to Google Street View, which don't necessarily need to be all panoramas included in your virtual tour project. So here you simply choose the ones you do want to show on Google. For demonstration purposes, I added this panorama right here because it carries GPS data. It was taken with a camera that saves this information right when shooting and I do want to demonstrate the difference in how to handle these types of panoramas. So let's select all of the panoramas and click done. Right, this screen is about allocating or positioning our panoramas on the map. Now there's two options. If you have a panorama with GPS data encrypted, you'll see this little icon down here. See, these up here don't have that icon. So with this panorama, it's as easy as selecting it and clicking place on map. The program then automatically recognizes the exact position and places the panorama accordingly. So that's the easy way. Let's delete this panorama because it was just a quick demonstration. And let's have a look at the other option and see how we place panoramas that don't come with GPS data. As you can see, they don't have the little icon. So now I manually zoom into the location where these panoramas have been taken. About here. Uh, 
and you can switch the view to satellite to better recognize the spot and you can change the angle but in map view it allows me to zoom in a little bit more than in satellite so I'll do that and when manually placing the panoramas we again have two options either you can select the panorama and click place on map which will place the pin in the center of the screen from where you can then move it or you can click and hold to drag the panorama onto the spot you want from here you position the panoramas where you took them Make sure you align the radar with the view you see here on the right in the player. So click and move the radar until it matches with the view in the player. Now it points towards the entry and indeed when spinning around we look down the street and now towards where the creek runs. So if you're not able to match the two from what you see in the player right away, try spinning it around until there's some sort of reference point which you're able to recognize on the map. Alright, so this actually is over here, so let's move that. And with this second panorama we do the same thing and adapt the radar. This is the entrance, so let's move the radar to where the door was. I'll quickly add the rest of the panoramas via drag and drop and always making sure to orientate the radars. Now that's the placing of the panoramas. The next thing we want to have a look at are the connections between the panoramas. As you may know, on Google Street View it allows you to click on arrows which will move you around. This is possible because the panoramas are linked to each other. So this is what you also have to do here. As of now, our panoramas here are placed, but they're not connected yet, which you can tell from this dotted line. By default, the panoramas are not connected. To create this connection, click on the first panorama and then simply click on the line. This connects panorama 1 to panorama 2 and the line is now continuous. Click once more to disconnect the two again. Once they're connected you will also see the little icon of the next panorama or position here in the viewer. That means they're connected. Now we have the connection between panorama 1 and 2 but not between panorama 1 and 4 because that would be behind here which you don't really see so we leave these two disconnected. However, we do connect the two with Panorama 3. Right, it's actually quite good that this happens. So sometimes when the two positions are quite close to each other, you may encounter problems trying to click on the line to connect because what you're actually doing is you're clicking on the radar of one or the other position. And clicking on a radar won't work, it won't activate the line because the program actually thinks that you're trying to select the pin rather than clicking on the line. In that case, it's best you apply the following little trick. Move the pin a little farther away for a second. Select the line, which will be easier now that you have a long line and the radars are quite far away. And then simply move the pin back to where it was. And we face the same issue for the connection between 2 and 4, so we separate the two activate the connection and bring the pin back to where it was. Always be careful you don't move the radar unintentionally when moving the pin though. And now basically you proceed the same way for the rest of the panorama. So I'll fast forward while placing and connecting all of the remaining panoramas to complete the tour. Once all panoramas are properly placed, oriented and connected, this is how it should look. See how some panoramas are connected and some aren't? That's all on purpose so it makes sense. 
Very important, down here we always have the option to save. So everything we did up here, all the changes we are making to Google Street View, we can and should save here. Everything we are doing in the Google Street View workshop will be saved with that button. Once finished and saved, we click on Publish and on Publish again. And now this is just a window that tells us that although we are publishing instantly and the process is very fast, Google Street View may take up to 24 hours to update the changes. That's something from their end where we can't really do anything. Usually the upload of the panoramas themselves is quite quick, so you can visualize them almost immediately, but the connections do tend to take a little bit longer to be reflected online on Google. Once this upload process is finished, the tour is online and you're done. If we go back to the publish option for a sec, we will see that we already have the option to delete the tour from the Google servers. We also have the option to edit the tour or to view the tour on Google. Clicking on that button, it'll take us to the tour's first panorama and we can see that the connections are there and it allows us to go inside and navigate between panoramas, everything in the layout and style that is so typical for Google. When we now go click on edit tour, we will see that within each panorama thumbnail, there's a link icon which would take us straight to that panorama view in Google Street View. Next to the link icon we have the option to manually delete a panorama which would take it out of the tour away from the map, delete its connections and when republished delete that specific panorama from Google's servers. It is important that you republish so that these changes do actually apply. What we would also see here is the number of visits or people who have seen the panorama on Google Street View. In this case, we obviously just uploaded the tour so there are no visits yet. And with this, we would have completed our process of publishing a tour to Google Street View with all the advantages that this implies as a marketing and sales tool. Always remember that each time something is changed in the tour and it is republished, it can take Google up to 24 hours to update this on its servers. Lastly, we'll demonstrate what the process is like when starting from an existing project where we have the panoramas linked through hotspots already. In this example we see that each panorama is already connected with others, so that will save us having to connect them in the Google Street View workshop. See how this hotspot takes us to this panorama, that one to another, etc. The first steps would then be the same. You click on Publish, Edit Tour, select the panoramas that you want to appear, in our case all. We would locate their position on the map. And now, when adding panoramas, you'll see that the connection lines between the panoramas already appear as continuous lines, which means they are connected. This will obviously save us a lot of work, as you can imagine. See how here it automatically detects and copies the fact that Panorama 4 is connected to Panoramas 2 and 3, but not to Panorama 1? Not having to think through each and every connection all over again really speeds up the process, especially in larger tours. And this would be the only notable difference between using an existing project or starting a new one. Now you just click on publish and you're done. Thanks for watching.